The Monday report, let's get into that conversation. We are talking about the International Day of the Seafarers. It's being marked on the 25th, that's on Thursday. And I have a great panel here for you. Mrs. Nancy Karigitu, she's the Principal Secretary, State Department of Shipping and Maritime at the Ministry of Transport, Infrastructure, Housing, Urban Development and Public Works. Also joining us live is John Omingo, Head of Commercial Shipping, Kenya Maritime Authority, and Miss Betty McKenna, International Federation of Transport Workers, is also joining us on Skype. We saw a lot of your questions coming through to our WhatsApp line. We'll give them priority and pose those questions to our guest tonight. And also there's some of them will be joining us on video as well. Mr. Stephen Owaki, Secretary General, Seafarers Union of Kenya, also known as SUK, and Reverend Moses Muli, Mission to Seafarers. It's all about the seafarers. This year's theme is seafarers are key workers. And I want to start with the PS here and just find out, Madam PS, thanks for making time for us. So what role are seafarers playing really to fight COVID-19? Uh, thank you, Trevor, and thank you for this opportunity to be able to talk about seafarers on this very important day. First of all, to put it in context, the Day of the Seafarer is in its 10th year since it was set up by the IMO. It's marked by the UN, and it is to bring attention to the important role that the seafarers play in our lives and keeping civil society safe uh, by bringing 90 uh, over 90 percent uh, of global trade to our doorsteps and also to honor them. Now, what are seafarers doing uh, in this pandemic? First of all, seafarers are at the front line. They are very knowledgeable uh, in terms of what the, the pandemic means. They've been to places where COVID has really hit, you know, working in ships that are traversing the world. And we've seen that for those who have come back, they've become very, very critical in the communities. You've seen them back in their communities and trying to educate the people on what COVID means and how they can avoid getting infected in Kilifi, someplace in Muranga and Nyeri. Those are all seafarers who have come back. But most important, uh, seafarers are keeping the global uh, trade alive and very critical in bringing medicines, food, medical equipment, uh, to the countries that need it, need, need it. And exposing, I mean, keeping themselves exposed, taking uh, the, the, the flag for us because they are missing their families, they are working extended periods. Yeah. Uh, they, are, they are really, you know, sacrificing a lot okay. to be able to keep global commerce uh, moving. All right. Thank let's, you. Let's bring in Omingo on this. You know, Mr. Omingo, what has KMA done really to facilitate port access for the seafarers during this period? Because I know that is one of their greatest challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's also a privilege to, to have been brought here to comment on this very important subject. First of all, to, to, to have the seafarers gain access to the port where there are several agencies Okay, maybe being, being part of it. It was a multi-agency initiative that set up a committee to find out how best can they be handled, particularly during this period of COVID-19. And, uh, and, and, and through these consultations with the KPA, with the, with the, with the public health, with the interior and, and all other agencies, it was possible to come up at a reasonable way of uh, handling their entry and exit from the port. And so then KMA in particular has been active in uh, addressing any specific issues that uh, may arise should they encounter any particular challenges. We liars with the other government agencies just to make sure that their entry and exit is facilitated very well. Uh, just to keep the, the ships going and the world going and the trade going uh, in this very difficult period that we have. Okay. Thank you. Ms. McKenna, let me bring you in on this conversation and find out from you, from an international perspective, what are some of the greatest challenges that our seafarers here go to? Um, thank you, Truth. Um, our challenges is common uh, all over the world, is uh, the crew change. And uh, when the contract is over and they want to come back home and meet the family, it's not only Kenya, but it's all over the world. Is the same same uh, issues which we are going to, it's going around the world. So how do you go about this then, from your perspective? 
Um, as ITF, ITF is International Trump Transport Workers Federation. It's a global organization which we look at the issues of welfare and for the seafarers all over the world. We have several offices and other inspectors. I'm one of them. I'm a ship inspector. Our issue is to make sure that if the crew arrive at the port and there will be a crew change, then we assist also, we work together with the government because we are here to work together with the government and the port authority and the maritime authority so that we make sure that the crew can get crew change. But for now in Kenya, we are yet to do the crew change and we are still uh, also waiting for the government to do uh, all the necessary. But I know everything is on order and we hope by next week we might be doing crew change in Kenya. I'm very sure with the government. Makena, how long have they been away before you do the crew change? Um, some have been away for one year, uh, wow. nine months. Uh, the, I think the minimum is six months. And ideally, and some of them want to come back home. And ideally, how frequent should the crew change be? Nine months. Nine the months maximum. maximum. Okay. Maximum. Yes. For the officer, you will see it's four months or six months. For ratings, uh, it's from nine months. That's the maximum which the IMO are put as right. a maximum. All right. Let's bring in PS on this. PS. So why why then do you want seafarers to be categorized as the essential workers? Now, when uh, under the World Health Guidelines, uh, movement, as you are aware, has been restricted, except for those considered essential and offering essential services. Now, if seafarers are involved in bringing essential services to, to the people, like we've seen it's medicine, it's medi medical equipment, food also, then, of course, if they are essential workers, then they'll be entitled to the same facilities uh, that other workers are, are being given. But we found that, you found that initially ports remained open, but the protocols for the seafarers were not put in place. And this is why we need them to be recognized as key workers so that they can be facilitated, uh, like Madam Betty has said, to be able to get relief uh, from working too much, to be able not to, to be overworked, to be able to, to be safe from mental stress, because being cooped up in, in the same place for one year, you can, ag you can agree that it affects mental health. Uh, they need also facilities to facilitate with their families. Usually in normal times, other than COVID times, when the ships come to port, the, the crew or the seafarers can access welfare facilities like the mission to seafarers where uh, Reverend Muli works, and then they're able to relax, to call their families. Uh, but right now, they are not able to do that. But if we recognize them as key workers, they'll be able to get crew change uh, in order to be relieved, not to work uh, on minimum crew and therefore be entitled to the same facilities as other workers on land who have been recognized as essential workers. Okay. Ms. Ms. McKenna... Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, okay. you're good. You're good, Madam Yes. But let me bring in Ms. McKenna on McKenna. On. Ms. McKenna, there's a M. Washira on oh, Twitter. He's wondering, I am a ship agent and have lots of inquiry for crew changeover at Mombasa Port. Please, can we get an update on when ships crew changeover will be allowed in Kenya? And this is an important aspect in shipping and also a revenue honor to immigration, ship agents, car hire operators, and ship agents as well. That's from Washira, Ms. McKenna. Yeah, um, let me tell Washira, we also received today an uh, email from India. Uh, there's a ship coming in first uh, next month. They also asked in the same for crew change. But bef uh, I had spoken that um, the government and uh, stakeholders right now are on meetings. And uh, Madam P.S., she can also explain and tell us, and we'll explain more better that the government is the one to implement, and that is what we are waiting from the government to tell us when. But I know the committee is set. I'm, I'm part of the committee, and um, I'm part of the implementation team uh, with the union and uh, the mission to seafarer. We are part of them, but I know Madam Nancy will give us the position right now where we are right now. Madam Pierce, what's the position? 
Uh, the position is that uh, going through the, the National Emergency Committee, yeah. uh, the protocols that were given by IMO, because we, we had to wait for direction from the IMO, the ILO, and other international organizations, like the ITF, like you've had, and ship owners associations, they gave us the guidelines on how to be able to facilitate crew change and also to get people, uh, or rather, uh, to board the ships and others to go home. So what we did uh, at the ministry is uh, present those protocols, uh, present the, the minimum that IMO had given uh, to the committee, and I, I want to reassure Kenyans that uh, the government has approved that, those protocols. That's what Betty is talking about, because we came back now and did stakeholder uh, meetings, and we've come up with the minimum protocols and what needs to be done. By next week or later this week, we should be able to have everything in place and do our first crew change. Okay. So, Mr. Mingo, let's bring you in. The, the, so, it's not just the crew changeover that's the issue. Once that is done, and Madam Pierce is saying maybe by the end of the week we will see that, when they get to the port, they then have to deal with port congestion. So what is the collaborative mechanism being put in place to ensure there's reduced port congestion so that as soon as they land, they just release, they're released? Okay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know port, port congestion is uh, a matter of how efficient are we handling the arrival of ships and the clearance processes. To what extent are we clearing the cargo from the port and how fluid is the corridor and the various points where the cargo passes through before it is it reaches the importers. So the, 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 so then for us to be able to effectively address the port clearances, there are, there are several agencies that are involved. We have the customs, the cabs, KPA, and all these other agencies that are involved in the logistics to just to make sure that the port congestion is, is, is reduced to a great extent. Now, the main thing that we do as KMA now, because initially the, the challenge is you have specific functions that you do as an agent or a government agency or a private party. Now, if these functions are not well defined and they are, they are, they, 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 the duration under which you're supposed to deliver is not well articulated, it becomes a problem. So what we have strived to do is a support community together with the KPA, KRA, and all other government agencies, is to develop a platform where the functions of the various parties are defined, the time limits are given, and we've created a monitoring and evaluation framework that would be able to pick out to what extent is each agency contributing to the overall efficiency of the port, not only the port, but the port corridor. And this we have developed under what we are calling the, the, the Mombasa uh, Port and Northern Corridor uh, Community Charter, and this charter is very specific on, on, on the targets given to each agency and the reporting framework. So as we work on this and make sure that it works, because we have already initiated a process of, uh, we had re already reviewed it, and we are setting so that it can be, it can be digitalized and uh, uh, awaiting the final, finalization of the integrated customer management system and the country platform, so that we'll be able to get the timestamp for the various agencies and help in the overall efficiency of the report, because it's not just port alone, but the entire chain of logistics, that if it properly addressed, then there will be no need for calling for report congestion, or, any, any, or, or congestion will not arise if there is a, a certain level of efficiency which is sustained by the all parties which are involved in the chain. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so let's bring in Reverend Moses Muli. He speaks on behalf of Mission to Seafair, as we spoke to him earlier on. Listen to what he had to say. My name is Reverend Moses Muli. I work for Mission to Seafarers, Mombasa, as the port chaplain. And in regard to seafarers being recognized as key workers in the world, I would like to say that for over 100 years, the Mission to Seafarers are all through recognized seafarers as key workers in the world. And that's why we give them support. We, we are there to support them both physically, spiritually, and in any way. And uh, I want to echo the words of uh, IMO Secretary General, Mr. Kitan, who recently said that the world could not function without seafarers, or without the efforts of seafarers. Uh, I agree that seafarers are key workers, majorly because of two things. One, 
because 90% of the things that we consume come through the ship, being be it uh, foodstuffs, medical medical equipments, clothes, and many other things come through the ship. And so without the seafarers, the ship cannot move. And that is why seafarers, for me, I feel they are key workers. Secondly, it is because of the challenges the seafarers go through. Life is in the sea is not easy. It's a very difficult life. Seafarers go through isolation, uh, loneliness, uh, being away from their families, sometimes communication barrier, they get their families at home. Sometimes they go through shipwreck and uh, sea challenges like sea waves and all those kind of things, piracy. And I will say that uh, being a seafarer is a sacrificial job. It is not a job like any other. And that is why, for me, I feel that seafarers are key workers and they need support. There are several challenges the seafarers are facing right now during this uh, crisis that we're in, the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the challenges is there is no crew change all over the world. There are those that uh, their contracts have ended. They cannot join their families. There are those that are supposed to join the ship. They cannot come into the ship because of the movement restrictions. And so that is one of the challenges. The other challenge is that there is denial of she uh, shoppers. They cannot come out of the ship. And that has caused mental stress, uh, mental health problem in, many of the, uh, men, in most of the seafarers. And so as a mission to seafarers, that is something now we are focusing on. So what we are doing, we are doing three things as mission to seafarers. One is to support the seafarers during this time. As you know, they cannot go out of the ship, and there are those things that they need. There are personal effects that they need. And what we do, we do supplies in the ship. We go on board the ship, we visit the ship, and we talk to them. In case they need anything, we go out in the shops and buy them and deliver them for free for seafarers. Then the other thing that we're also doing is guidance. As I said, some of them are going through mental health problems. So the mission to seafarers, in conjunction with ICMA, International Christian Maritime Association, have come together and introduced uh, digital chaplaincy, where uh, all over the world seafarers can chat, can have a chat with the chaplains online. So we support them, we have time with them, we talk to them, we encourage them, and we try to counsel them in whatever challenges they are going through. And lastly, that uh, the mission to seafarers we are doing is connectivity. As you know, internet is very important. That's the only way they can uh, connect with their, with, their, with their family's home and with their friends. So we are providing uh, airtime in the ships um, where possible. We are talking with the ship's agents to provide Wi-Fi in the ships. And also, as I said, there is that platform where we can talk to the seafarers online and they, back at their home they ca the family can visit the chaplain and they can be able to be connected with their families with with the with the seafarer in the ship all right that was reverend moses muli mission to seafarers and he's touching on an issue where betty mckenna is most best place to talk about because she's with the international federation of transport workers the welfare of the seafarers and uh miss mckenna the issue of isolation possible shipwreck sometimes even piracy how are you ensuring that the seafarers have a proper mental yeah. state because they 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 seem to be going through a lot of challenges how are you ensuring that their welfare is well taken care of including their mental state um as me as a ship inspector i bought the ship as uh, the way muli have uh, spoken to he board the other side as a spiritual. I go on the issues of the welfare on board. And now this is the time when we are seeing also employers are misusing the workers without paying them their money on time and taking advantage of COVID, saying that they don't have money and uh, other issues. But as an ITF inspector and a ship inspector, it is my duty that I make sure that the employer will take care of all the needs, food, 
uh, issues of salaries sent back to their family because there's something called allotment. Uh, the seafarers normally do not receive all the amount of money on board the ship. Part of the sh money he receive at home, which is called allotment, and the other part he receive on board. And then other ships are also having bonus on board and uh, also making sure the overtime which they are doing, also they are paid on, uh, they are included on their salary. So my issue will be, my duty will be going on board, checking the documentation, checking the salary and checking their pay slip and making sure that the salary are on the, they are paid and also speaking to the crew and asking them if when was the last uh, uh, payment. But sometimes uh, we no normally receive other information. As seafarers, we have a SO a SMS, which all the seafarers in the world, they know it and it is free. It is, uh, uh, it is paid by ITF. Where they have a problem, they will SMS it and we will receive direct. So that is our duty. Issues of mental and issues of spiritual, that is where now we bring the mission to seafarers to come on board. If they are sick, we also bring the Kenya Maritime Authority. We also bring the, the public health to, to make sure that they are received and be taken to the hospital direct because we have managed it in the port of Mombasa. Some have come with malaria, some have come with a heart problem, and they have been received very well in the port of Mombasa with public health and the port authority. And I want to say thank you for the Kenya Port Authority and public health. All right. Let's bring in Mr. Mingo on this also just to comment on the issue of supplies to the seafarers themselves because Reverend Muli talked about that as being one of the challenges. How are you ensuring? Because sometimes if the changeover is taking too long, it means the supplies that they went with to sea might dwindle at some point. How are you ensuring that they're fully fledged supply stock, they have it all the time? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, what, uh, what we have lobbied for is for a recognition of the auxiliary services, the ones that supply the ship, to be allowed to operate at the time that is convenient for the ship to receive its supplies. And so then uh, in the demarcation of the essential workers, uh, it, was, uh, it didn't come out clearly, but uh, that uh, seafarers and uh, the associated uh, services provided by ship chandlers Although ship chandlers, they do carry food, food was, supply of food was categorized as an essential service. But there are other things like people who do minor repairs. If a vessel needs a minor repair, their ship contractors also need to go on board and do those minor repairs when a ship is still at, at the port. And uh, we are liaising with the ship's agents. Whenever they have a need to address a particular issue in a ship, we liaise with them, we, we, we write the necessary requests, and they are allowed to provide these essential services so that the services, apart from food, can be provided smoothly without hindrance. But again, because we have the multi-agencies that are involved, like the public health has to come in, so there are very, very, very clear conditions under which they would be allowed to serve a ship just when the ship needs those particular kind of services. So whenever there is a problem, we come in and coordinate that effort to make sure that the supplies are never held back and uh, this, the, the, the various uh, services are provided so that it can come in and uh, go out very, very smoothly. All right. Thank Madam P.S., Mike here on Twitter, Mike One on Twitter, say, he says that what efforts are there to assist locally trained seafarers to get international recognition without discrimination like the crew from other nationals like Philippines and Indian crews? Uh, say it again, please. This what is, efforts? This is from Mike Wan. He says, what efforts are there to assist locally trained seafarers to get international recognition without discrimination? Wow, that's something that we've been doing uh, particularly for the last one year. That's why we have Kenya Maritime Authority to set up the necessary regulations, to do the inspections, to do port state control, uh, to ensure that uh, working with our international social partners like the ITF, you've heard from uh, Madam Betty McKenna, that the Kenyan seafarer is enjoying the same facilities as his uh, brothers and her brothers in the, you know, from the other nationalities. This is where maritime uh, education, like Bandari Maritime Academy, where we are today, comes into play. Because 
the role of the institution is to give internationally accredited and recognized uh, documentation that then make the seafarer qualified and at the same level as his other you know, international counterparts. And that's what we've been doing. And uh, the other thing I think he's, he, sh he could be raising is about uh, recognition agreements. And that's another process that we are working on. Uh, as as I, I have said earlier, earlier this morning when we were on another show, we already have agreements with a few international partners. The, this is work in progress, and we are still going on to get other international recognition agreements. The main one we have is with Panama, uh, which means that uh, the ships registered in Panama, then our seafarers also, when they serve on those ships, also enjoy the same facilities. We've got another one with Liberia, and you see those are the big giants in terms of ship registration. And this helps to, to get our seafarers get the same recognition and accreditation because then they are employed on the, on the same salaries. As you are aware, in February this year, we took another, uh, or we, we got another partnership with another, uh, with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia also and they've taken some of our seafarers. And post-COVID, because we are also going on even you know, on the virtual platforms, we are still talking to some. Last week, I know we concluded an agreement with uh, Barbados. Uh, we've got another one in the pipeline with Jamaica. And this is what will enable us to access as many job opportunities for our young people as possible. Yeah. But most important, on the same uh, you know, level, as the nationals uh, of those other countries. So it's work in progress. We've started, and I can say that it's going at uh, an incredible speed, but okay. we'll keep on doing it. All Thank right. You. Let's take a quick break here on the Monday report. When we come back, Mrs. Nancy Karigidu is still with me. She's the Principal Secretary, State Department of Shipping and Maritime. John Mingo is also here, Head of Commercial Shipping, Kenya Maritime Authority, and Miss Betty McKenna, International Federation of Transport Workers. When we come back, we pose all your questions to them, all right? See you in just a bit.